everybody, Jason here from Ghostbusters News, and as advertised, today we received a brand new trailer for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Well, actually, we received two new trailers as both the North American and International, they were released. And a quick heads up here, if you've yet to watch both of them, they are available right here on the Ghostbusters News YouTube channel. Links are down below in the description. All right, so given that there are two new trailers, today's breakdown video, it is gonna be a double decker because surprisingly, despite there being some similarities between the two, both of them, they're pretty much entirely different. Given that I watched the standard North American trailer first, that's the one that we're gonna start with here today. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so we open up with the Ecto-1 cruising around city streets, rocking some noticeable upgrades. This includes that slightly updated livery and also the dome atop the roof rack, which contains the new Ghost Trap drone. More on that later. I've been waiting 40 years for this. We hear a rather familiar voice as we get this shot of the Spangler family with Gary Gruberson, fading back to the original 1984 film. According to these hacks, they saved the world. No eyewitnesses. Wait a minute, no eyewitnesses? I mean, I get that nobody else was on that rooftop other than the Ghostbusters, but what about countless people seeing the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man? And if we're gonna dive into Ghostbusters 2, there was a museum covered in slime. I mean, also the Statue of Liberty, it freaking walked. But I get it, strange things, they happen in New York City every single day, and these instances, they could just be chalked up as different conspiracy theories. Now at Hook and Ladder, we see Phoebe, played by McKenna Grace, and then Trevor, played by Finn Wolfhard. And it appears that Trevor, he's going through some old boxes. And wait, is that an unused box of Ghostbusters 2 hot beverage thermal mugs and free balloons for the kids? I don't know, maybe. Also inside this box, we've got Ghostbusters artwork. Finn looks to be holding a magazine focusing on his grandfather, Egon Spengler. Ah, oh, and this is such a cool shot. Firing a laser gun indiscriminately. Oh, and that familiar voice, uh, yeah, that was Dickless himself, Walter Peck. And judging by the room he's in and how he's presented here, he certainly seems like he still has a lot of power. Possibly a judge, maybe the mayor, probably the mayor? We then move into Ray's Occult Books, where Ray, he is reading the newest copy of Strange But True, and wait a minute here, everyone in the fandom is gonna need Ray's Occult buttons now. We're then introduced to Kumail Nanjiani's character, Nadim Razmadi, who presents Ray with the Golden Orb. Pat Oswalt's character, Dr. Hubert Wartsky, is shown as we're then inside the Ghostbusters research facility. Another new character, Lars Pinfield, played by James Acaster, he's joined by Lucky, Celeste O'Connor. Uh, also appears that we have a Red Vine sponsorship in the film. Does that mean we're going to get some Red Vines that taste like Ecto Cooler? I mean, maybe? Most likely not. Parts of the orb, they move, and what's inside? Well, judging by what happens here, probably that death chill that everyone seems so worried about. We're then shown this stone tablet with the movie's big baddie Garaka on it. Ray's talking to Nadim, and notice the sling here. Likely a result of Pinfield handling that orb, and we just saw this thing on that tablet a second ago, but Garaka, it has awakened, finding its horns attached to a wall in what appears to be a trophy room. And with Garaka out of its slumber, we see the long-term effects of the death chill. <laughs> and yeah. You know what? Seeing that, Pinfield, he got off easy. Oh, I should also make note here of the firefighter's helmet. You'll see that there is the number eight on it, a clear nod to Hook and Ladder 8, the New York City firehouse that doubles as the Ghostbusters headquarters. Great shot of Garaka's backside here, and in footage from that teaser trailer, it is shown as we head inside the Ecto-1. Trevor has a controller in hand, which appears to be the exact same controller used for Afterlife's RTV. Winston Zeddemore, Ernie Hudson, he hands a Neutrona wand to Ray, and in talking about the gear here, we're then presented with this shot of the upgraded, unlicensed nuclear accelerators. Or you know, the Proton Pack for short. Peter Vankman, the one and only Bill Murray, he shows up in an orange jacket, and Janine, not only is she going to be answering phones in this new film, but she's also going to be busting Ghost, suiting up on the big screen. And speaking of Janine, here's our very first look at her Ghost Bustin gadget, which looks to be a Proton Packless one arm Neutrona wand. And while not the same, it is giving me some vibes of Extreme Ghostbusters Proton Pistol, as well when it came to the first Ghostbusters movie, before the concept of Proton Packs they came about, they instead were going to use these little arm blasters, which you can see in these storyboards. A proton pack without a cover on the cyclotron, it's shown revving up. This detail, it matches up to Phoebe Spangler's Funko Pop, so we'd expect that, yeah, this is Phoebe in this scene. We're then headed to the New York Public Library, and it's good to know that some things, they never change. The library lady looks to be a practical effect, which, you know, I love. 
As well, Ray's jacket here, another nod back to that first film. The mini puffs then cause some chaos inside the Ghostbusters Paranormal Research Center while we get our very first look at Pukey. And this thing, it's adorable, but it's also highly unsettling. And when it comes to its name, it was revealed thanks to a Funko Pop release as well as Hasbro's new 5-inch toy line. What are people going to call? Ghostbusters, what do you want? Ah, nostalgia. You know I love it. it. It's powerful. It is powerful stuff. Oh, and much like the birthday scene in Ghostbusters 2, it is clear that Ray Parker Jr.'s song, it's canon within this film series. Like, it actually exists in this universe. Buster makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. And then headed back to the library, uh, I said it in the teaser trailer, which included a similar shot, but this is giving me strong 2009 Ghostbusters the video game vibes. Stand back. Look out! Here they go! Whoa! Double full torso animators! Lucky then has a run-in with Garaka at the Ghostbusters Research Center, and Proton Streams, they get frozen. And Lucky here, she likely also gets frozen. Bill Murray has just made all Ghostbusters fans now want Ray-Ban sunglasses. Heads up! It's all dark and horny at 12 o'clock. And as the battle, it's about to begin, or what, what's going on here? I mean, the Ghostbusters, they're all lined up, but who is this? Hmm, moving on. We're given our first look at the drone ghost trap in action as it takes flight, with this scene believed to be from the film's opening, and then we go back to the firehouse's attic. And much like that library ghost, Slimer looks glorious. So right there, that was the first trailer. So now let's move on to the international. All right, so I said Pukey was a little unsettling, uh, but to me, this, this is unsettling. I mean, this has to be the clear definition of something strange in the neighborhood. Phoebe is shown here having a totally normal game of chess. No doubt a callback to Ghostbusters Afterlife. I mean, is she playing with Egon's spirit? Wait a minute, live music at Ray's Occult's on Fridays? Who in the heck is actually playing at Ray's? Ugh, regardless, it is nice to see the bookstore is actually busy. This time around, we get a little bit more audio between Ray and Nadim, and as Ray goes to scan that orb with the PKA meter, things, they take a turn. All over New York City, ghost attacks are on the rise. As we get this narration from Winston, uh, these shots to me, they kind of steal this trailer. Both Trevor and Lucky atop the firehouse, as well as Winston talking to the press outside of the firehouse. Also, notice Dickless Walter Peck in the foreground. Hold on your ass! Equipped to fight back. So this international trailer, it does give us this great shot of that Ghostbusters Paranormal Research Center, and I've yet to mention it just yet, but I should do so now. Here's those new black uniforms with the R&D No Ghost patch that I'm sure all Ghostbuster fans out there, they're going to be wearing to the premiere. And that's one big looking containment unit. We're then introduced again to Pukey, and Pukey, well, he finally lives up to that name. Ever since you brought in this all, strange things have been occurring. We think it's commanding of the spirits. As you're hearing, we're getting much more narrative related to the death chill and in turn Garaka. Is something trying to get out? Many things. I'm just gonna say it again here. The library ghost looks so freaking good. Like so far, this has gotta be my favorite shot from Frozen Empire. Trevor, he's gotta try that pole and uh <laughs> don't forget the ice. Get it? Frozen Empire, the whole movie's about ice. <laughs> This looks to be Phoebe standing behind the Ecto-1, while Gary's pep talk is likely to come before Garaka's arrival at the firehouse. As well, in a follow-up to that teaser trailer, we get another glimpse at one of those fashionable red parkas. And we saw this in the last trailer, but I didn't really mention it before, but this scene of Trevor with the Proton Pack, again, it takes place in the attic of the firehouse. So I'm guessing after he gets slimed, he comes back to settle the score with Slimer. A little more of that run-in between Lucky and Garaka, which as we saw in that teaser and that North American trailer, things don't go Lucky's way. Great multi-generational group shot of the Ghostbusters here, but there are some omissions, most notably Phoebe, and uh, yeah, I'm totally sold on Garaka. This thing is giving me strong 1980s movie monster vibes. And the international trailer, it does in the exact same way as the North American, with Trevor meeting Slimer. And that does it today for our double shot breakdown of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire's new trailers. 
What did you think of them? Which one was your favorite? And out of the two, what was your favorite moment? Comment down below, let us know. With that said, that's all I've got for you for this one. As always, subscribe. If you'd like to join up with Ghostbusters news, check out our Patreon page. A link to that is down below in this video's description. And we'll see you right back here next time. Company 8 Ghostbusters News is the keeper of the gate Listen up ghosts Jason's here to see your fate After he gets all the day's updates off his plate What do 